all of you all for joining us, breaking bread and having lunch together. This is an exciting time for Houston, an exciting day for me and my family. I have my daughter Timby here. I have my daughter Attica here somewhere. I'm here. Right here. I have my sons Nicholas, Douglas, and Thomas. Where are they? They are around here somewhere. And my wife Aubrey, who I will tell you will be one of the most energetic first ladies that this city has ever had. And I have a very special secret weapon here. <laughs> When you vote, at least consider the mayor who has the best-looking granddaughter. <laughs> Let me tell you, this is a great city we live in, and this is a great opportunity for us to shape Houston's destiny. Thank all of you all for joining me today. I'm asking for a couple of things today. I'm asking as you enjoy the meal, let's think about where our city can go and what we can do together to move it in that direction. Let's think about this city as a safe city, a place where public safety is understood and is common to us, where men and women are safe in their homes, in their businesses, and their place of travel, a place where we work with our police department. Think of Houston as a city that grows jobs, that is business friendly, that has the environment to continue to grow and reinvent itself. We love this city, a great city. We can be a business-friendly city and continue being number one in this country in job growth. Think about Houston also as a place with great neighborhoods, neighborhoods that people want to live in, neighborhoods that are competitive with our suburban counterparts. Think of this city as a place where we protect our neighborhoods, we rebuild our neighborhoods. Think of this city also as a great hub of transportation, that we're good because we've solved the dilemma of getting from one side of the county to the other side of the county, that we have effective freeways and highways and thoroughfares, but also a great light rail system, a great com commuter rail system, a great, great, great neighborhood, walkable neighborhoods with bicycles, and my granddaughter is very distracting to me. <laughs> In mid sentence, I have to tell you how much I love this little girl. And don't let her leave. This is our opportunity. It starts with our vote tomorrow. But many of you here are city employees. Let me see the hands of the city employees. <laughs> let, let, let me tell you what I know about you. And then let me tell you what I want you to know about me. What I know about you is that almost to a person, the people who work at the city are hardworking, committed, conscientious people who love the city and love their jobs. You take on that task every day because you love the city. And that job gives you the opportunity to grow your families, to develop the best that you can be. I know also that you're concerned about where this city is going. You're concerned about job security. You're concerned about the rising cost of insurance as a city employee. You're concerned about the protection and the safety of your pension plans. You're concerned that you're in a work environment where people care about you, where you're respected, where your ideas are sought rather than rejected. You're looking for somebody who builds morale at the top at City Hall. I understand that. Let me tell you about me. You may not know me. I have worked just as many of you have worked. You, know, you may not know that I worked at one time at Armco Steel. I worked at one time at Shell Oil. I have had the opportunity to be on both sides of the screen. When I was there, I wanted the same thing you want. Respect, recognition, and at least reward when I do a good day's work. You may also need to know about me, that I understand what it means to be a city worker and the importance of your job to your family. That's why as a candidate I have said, not once, not twice, but multiple times, during this budget crunch, I will not balance the budget at City Hall on the backs of city workers. Now somebody didn't have their camera rolling, let's rewind, let's play, make sure all the, make sure all the cameras get it well. Gene Locke will not balance.
puts the city budget on the backs of city workers. Let's be real clear. Let's understand we've got to work together. As your mayor, I will try to create an atmosphere of comradeship and team and team and, and team working together. I will try to be a mayor that is accessible. I will require that all of the department heads be open and accessible to workers. I will demand of you as workers that you give me the best that you've got. But I will give you the recognition and respect that goes with that. Now, let me tell you something not about me and not about you, but about this great city we live in. If we work together, we can do things in this city that have not been done. Look at this audience. It is reflective of Houston. It is a diverse city. This audience is a diverse audience. Working together, we can accomplish the greatness that is Houston's. I need your help to get elected. I need your energy. I need your efforts. I need your votes. We are less than 24 hours away from the time people do the final voting for mayor of this city. So as we fellowship today, I need to ask you a favor. Everybody here knows nothing in life is free. These hot dogs are not free. There's a price that goes with these hot dogs. The price is I need your help. I need your help. I need your support. I need you to tell somebody back on the job, Gene Locke is my man. I need you to tell somebody back at home, Gene Locke is my man. I need you to tell somebody on the street, Gene Locke is my man. I need you to tell somebody at church, Gene Locke is my man. I need you to tell somebody on the phone, Gene Locke is my man. I need your help. I need your energy, your effort, your excitement. We can win this race if I get your help. So on this special day, I say to you, at this beautiful place, the future of this city is bright. It's bright because of the kind of people that we have here. It's bright because we all dream the same dreams. It's bright because we can come together, we can work together. Sure, there will be some dark days ahead. Sure, there will be some tightening of belts that we'll have to do at City Hall. Sure, there will be some tightening of family income that we're doing across the city. But that will not dissuade us from where we're going. The future of Houston is bright. And so on this day, I say thank you for coming. I say thank you for your interest in this campaign. But I ask you, please give me your help. I need your energy now and at 1 o'clock and at 3 o'clock and at 7 o'clock. On the phone, on the emails, calling people, talking about Gene Locke. And tomorrow, go to the polls. Take somebody. Go home. Get somebody else. Take them. Let's do it all day long. Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, I want to be smiling. And I want you to be smiling with me. Let me tell you one little story before I go. <clears throat> because I think this may be an indication of things to come. Yesterday, when I was visiting churches, the last church that I visited in the south side of town, there was a lady sitting there named Miss Thurma Rigmaiden. Ms. Rigmaiden may be now 90 years old. She was my second client as a lawyer. I handled a probate matter for her way back when. When I finished that probate matter for her some 30 years ago, she smiled and said thank you. When I saw her yesterday, she smiled and said, Gene, thank you. And I said, why, Ms. Rigmaiden? Thank you for giving yourself for us. We need you. That meant something to me. It tells me that this campaign is not about me, not about my family, not about City Hall. It's about the people in Houston. So on tomorrow, I need your help. I need your vote. God bless you and thank you.